uh, and she'll be joining us in just a moment. Uh, Kelly Kulik, who I hope you know uh, a bit about. You should from listening to class the other day and uh, also from um, information I sent you. I see Kelly uh, has joined us, so um, I'll welcome her uh, in just a moment. I would just say to the students, Kelly's going to be with us for uh, about a half hour, uh, which would put us at about 11.35 or so. She has uh, uh, an airplane to catch her. She has to head to the airport, so we appreciate her taking that time. And when Kelly leaves, uh, I do have some instructions and uh, some directives for students. So please plan on being with us till about 11.45 or uh, 10 to 12. Uh, so without further ado, uh, uh, welcome to Kelly Kulik. Um, I'll give Kelly a round of applause. I hope she can hear me. Uh, we certainly thank Kelly for joining us. Maybe we could wave, show Kelly we're a friendly uh, class. Uh, and I'll just read a very short uh, bio uh, so that we can get to the questions. Uh, Kelly Kulik, as uh, our students are aware, uh, made bowling history in 2010 when she captured the PBA, uh, PBA Professional Bowlers Association Tournament of Champions title to become the first woman to win a PBA tour event. Uh, and I have somewhere here in my notes, Kelly actually won the championship match. It was not a nail biter. Kelly uh, won 265 to 195 uh, over Chris Barnes, who was the top seed. Um, following her outstanding collegiate career at Moorhead State, where she was a three-time uh, National Collegiate Bowling Coaches Association MVP award winner, she captured the Professional Women's Bowling Association Rookie of the Year honors in the year 2000. Kelly is a 14-time and current Team USA member. Uh, she has uh, she has won six major titles, uh, and she uh, perhaps one of her greatest honors was uh, inducted into the United States Bowling Congress USBC Hall of Fame in 2019. So we are thrilled to have Kelly Kulik, a Hall of Fame bowler, a historic bowler. And a bowler from our neighborhood, she's a Union High School graduate, and we're thrilled to have Kelly Kulik join Period 3, Roselle Catholic Sports and Society uh, class virtually. Kelly, welcome. Anything you'd like to say to the students before we get to some questions? Hi, Joe. Uh, good morning, almost afternoon class. Thanks for having me today through this virtual meeting. Always a pleasure to, to come on and, and talk a little bit about bowling, a little bit about myself hopefully inspire some of the youth of today for tomorrow. And uh, I just appreciate you devoting your time to me this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly. It's our pleasure. And uh, normally I would, uh, in, I would, uh, well, I did it as we did normally. I asked the students to write down some questions. Normally I would uh, uh, let them ask you questions in class enthusiastically. Uh, but I think I'm going to read the questions of the students. And then maybe, maybe at the end, if I miss something, if a student has a question, perhaps we could uh, we could do that at the very end. But Kelly, stay with me because the first part is going to be uh, kind of like a two part. Well, why don't we go with this part first? Uh, from Ashley Etienne and James Howlett, uh, they asked, James's question was, how did you get into bowling? And Ashley's question was, out of all the sports, what made you choose bowling? What is something that you love about bowling? So before we get into the professional aspect, just maybe how did you get started uh, in bowling and, and what attracted you? When I was six years old, my, I have two older sisters. They're eight and seven years older. And when they would go shopping with grandma, I would go bowling with grandpa. And uh, my neighbor down the street took me bowling on a Saturday afternoon. I basically just fell in love with it. I'm a very competitive athlete. I enjoyed it so much. And he basically said, if, if you drive, my mom said, if you drive her there back and forth every Saturday, she could join a league. So from the moment I picked up a ball and just had the sheer enjoyment of it, I kept going back every Saturday. Excellent. The Saturday bowling league. Very, very good. I, I'm taking it. I'm guessing that wasn't the first time Kelly was asked that question. She had a, she had a great answer. Uh, let's follow up with that, Kelly. Uh, this is from uh, Matt Arias. Um, Matt Arias and James Clay, and he asked a similar question. What made you become a professional bowler? What inspired you 
to pursue this career? Uh, at a very young age, I used to love watching bowling. ABC Wide World of Sports, way before your time, youngsters. But that used to be um, our, our, our main telecast on Saturday for noons. I fell in love watching the men bowl. And then the women bowled on a separate station at nighttime. When I was a very active athlete, I actually played basketball and I loved basketball. But when I graduated high school in 95, they did not have the WNBA. If you wanted to play professionally, you had to travel to Europe or Asia in order to compete in basketball. So really, my first love was basketball. I loved being on the court. My best friend and I used to play every time, every day after school. But bowling is something I enjoyed so much and fell in love with. And it idolized the men and women on the TV shows that I knew when I was in college, I was going to bowl for college. But had the WNBA been around in my time, might have seen a different Kelly Kulik uh, jersey instead of the bowling jersey. It might have been a basketball one. Wow, that's that's that's, that's great. Uh, that's great information. And uh, as I as I mentioned to uh, Kelly yesterday, we did a little prep interview with uh, Miss Rondeau, and and I said to Kelly uh, that the young ladies today have so many more opportunities than were afforded of female athletes, and that's as recent as uh, the mid '90s that Kelly's talking and so many more opportunities than, you know, in the 70s. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more maybe about high school basketball a little bit later uh, with Kelly uh, if we have time, uh, and that's another great answer. Uh, Kelly, here's a question from uh, Deshaun, uh, and it's uh, we're going to jump right into your, you know, perhaps if not your greatest, greatest accomplishment, your most well-known accomplishment. And Deshaun's question was, were you nervous before you played or bowled in the all-men's tournament and did you think you would win that event? Uh, Deshaun, I was I was very nervous. I was very, very nervous. But I had a lot of good teaching and preparation prior to my being a professional bowler. Going back to bowling camp when I was 12 years old, Dick Ricker, I went every summer and had some training there and a lot of mental training. And you hear today about athletes talking about the power of visualization. So really the nighttime before that, I kind of locked myself in the bathroom and just kind of put myself in a positive place where I saw myself over and over again, just striking, having a good feeling, letting my body go through the motions. Um, just, you know, Kelly-esque is kind of like Jordan taking a, a shot from three point and just sinking it to win a game with all the the, the hoo-ha right now with ESPN and, and his series, which is great. But the power of visualization was good. And um, I had to win the first match in order to get to that final match. So really the first match was, was pertinent. And then once everything happened, my mom gave me a big hug. She said, you, you trained for this all your life. You know what you need to do. Just go out and get after it. And, and that's exactly what I did. I just, I trusted myself. I saw myself doing it. And, and that's where the finish came from. Oh, great, great. Great stuff, Kelly. Uh, great stuff. Nice of you to mention Jordan. We've yeah. mentioned him in our class a few times with that awesome, uh, with that awesome uh, documentary. Uh, excuse me for not knowing all this, Kelly. I've tried to do my prep work. W was <coughs> was that a step ladder format? Uh, that that event. Yes, it was. So the, the top four individuals made the show. I was seated second on the show. Uh, Rhino Page lost to Mika. I beat Mika Koivinemi, and then I went on to to bowl Chris for the title match. So, so you had to win, in, in essence, a semifinal, and then Correct. that puts you in the final. Yes. That's excellent. Just just to follow up, and, and Deshaun, uh, I hope he feels good. He's up there wearing his hood, which he wouldn't be doing if we were in the classroom at RC. <laughs> but uh, if uh, did you feel or could you describe feeling extra weight? Uh, and I know all about carrying extra weight, but did you feel extra weight uh, of being – a woman, you know, in, in that men's competition, or could you describe that feeling, or did you just have to face uh, ap approach it as it was just another bowling match? Um, at first, I felt I didn't belong because the history of the event, you had to win a national title to compete in it. I was granted an entry based on my performance in the women's event, and the commissioner gave me that entry. So um, I, once I was there, I've always felt like I've been a carrier for, for bowling in general. I never wanted to make it a boy or girl issue or, or male, female. I just wanted to be the best athlete I possibly could have been and still be. And that was that was my presence. It wasn't about being the first woman ish. It was just winning that title. So believe it or not, the sound of the audience was was bearable, uh, unbearable to a level that was bearable. Um, but like when I was bowling, this, the noise just wasn't there. It was only there when I struck, but I was so focused and tunneled on what I needed to do. That's what I heard. 
And speaking of that tunnel and focus, Kelly, uh, again, I'm going off the top of my head, but I think you came out of the gate and bowled maybe seven straight strikes or seven out of eight on your way to that 265. So you were locked in from the very beginning. Yeah, I against Chris's match, I went one, two, three. I had the front four, pocket seven, ten in the fifth, and then almost off the sheet for, for the last one. So ten out of possible 12 strikes, yep. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So and it's ten it, class. Even though it's ten frames uh, in bowling, if you strike in the in the tenth frame, you get two additional balls. So that's what she means by saying ten out of twelve uh, strikes. That would be a great quiz question. How many frames in bowling, or how many strikes would take a perfect game? Kelly, have you you bowled a perfect game? I think I did read that. Or I, I think I read there was a number of them. Yeah, I have. I, I've honestly the number is somewhere around fifty or so, maybe a little bit higher, slightly lower. Oh, I, oh I have ones gosh. that are very important <laughs> to me in other countries in major competitions. Um, so yeah, I do have a perfect game. <laughs> That's great. Let's. Uh, and and by the way, Kelly, I, I won't bore the students with this, or I could say this later, but I also remember watching a lot of bowling uh, on Channel Seven. Chris Shanko with Nelson Burton Jr. back when uh, back when I remember watching. So yep. uh, so I certainly know what you're talking about. Uh, question number uh, number three. Another one from Deshaun. Boy, Deshaun, we're going to have to give you some extra credit. And also uh, Ricky Zhang uh, checking in with this. Uh, Rick, Ricky's a big Steph Curry fan, Kelly, FYI. And also uh, I'm tying in Jalisa and Jocelyn's questions. So bear with me. Uh, tying it all together. What was your reaction when you found out you were invited to go to the White House? What was your visit like at the White House? And what was it like to go to the White House? So uh, I did know that Kelly was invited to the White House, and then she was explaining to me that she did go. So, Kelly, could you answer uh, you know, all those questions or at least parts of them? Sure. Uh, March is influencing known for Women in History Month. And uh, there was an advisor in the White House who was a fan of bowling and really went out of her way to try to get me invited. I did get invited. I got to witness some speakers and actually Mr. and Mrs. Pre well, First Lady, Barack Obama and Michelle sat one row in front of me. So I got a few pictures of the back of their head and I actually got to shake their hands. And uh, it, it just was a, a major event in women's history. And to be part of that amongst all the historian ladies, not just athletes worldwide, um, advocates for, for health and food and, and, and care and all around the nation was fantastic. So it was a great experience. You think about security today through the airports. Boy, there was a lot of security just to get through that building. And I, I, I'm going to confess this. I did take a napkin out of the ladies' restroom. So I did take something. <laughs> well, we won't we won't turn you in. Um, so so it wasn't just an event for sports females, ladies in sports. It was an event just honoring special and accomplished females overall. That is correct. Yes, I would have loved to see in the awesome. bowling lanes in the White House, but um, Sasha and the the two young ladies were in the the residence area, so I couldn't go down and see it. But I do know there have been some other professional oh. bowlers that have gotten to see the lanes and actually thrown a ball or two. That's great. Uh, and is the uh, uh, item you took from the ladies' room that has the seal of the president or White House on it or something <laughs> it like that? Just had the White House stamp. I, I honestly, I think I used it once I got home and and discarded <laughs> it. But uh, I was able Very to good. have some nice hors d'oeuvres and everything. See part of other wings of the White House, and it just you know to be in that building is is so such an awe and and emotional feeling. So fantastic to be invited and be there. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, very good, Kelly. Uh, and, and Kelly, I think we're setting a record for period three attendance today uh, with their cameras on. So I hope you uh, I hope you accept that compliment. Uh, I usually Thank am you. staring at more. Uh, yeah, it's great. So let's uh, let's keep it moving. And this is, you know, uh, uh, you know, we could talk a lot about your bowling and the students are obviously interested. But I think some of the students were also interested in this. And this is a question from Kevin. Uh, who said, uh, actually, Kevin and Valerie, and I see Valerie at the bottom, uh, how did you end up in the Spider-Man comic, and how did it feel to be written into the comics, and what specific character were you in the comics? So maybe we could talk for a little bit about Spider-Man and how, how that all came about, quite interestingly. Yeah, and this is a true story. So when we're at a professional event, we have something that's called a pro-am. Similar to golf, you can play with Tiger Woods and so forth. Amateur people can come out and join the pros on the lanes for a few games of bowling, the pro-am. I had met this young lady, Ariel David, in Pennsylvania. She was from Long Island, and I just 
I talked to her. I spent some time with her. I answered her questions. And uh, no good deed goes unpunished. I really just had a nice conversation with her. And her dad took notice of that. Well, when I made the men's tour, we had a competition in Long Island. And I actually didn't bowl very well in that competition. It wasn't a strong event for me. But I met her father and her again there in Long Island. And it turns out her father, Peter David, was the um, creator of the Hulk comic. So Peter David came up to me and said, hey, would you be interested in being in a comic book? And I basically had the deer in the headlight expression like, huh? Um, you know, especially since I wasn't doing too well. <laughs> but he took notice that I was so nice to his daughter and the accomplishment that I achieved. And he asked me if I'd want to be in a Spider-Man comic book. He would write in the storyline. Todd Nock would do all the illustrations and the pictures. And it really just established itself from that. And you'll see the character from it, the history of myself and all the interviews I've done. My father has, a, has an auto body business in Elizabeth, still running for 51 years. So when the tour was on hiatus, I actually worked on cars for a little while. I spent some time in the shop. Now I'm more like a glorified secretary because my travels take me so frequently away from home. I just basically do the accounting, and keep up with the books and, and keep my dad on a straight path. But uh, I developed the character from there being a, a, an auto body employee, tow truck driver, professional bowler on the side. And that's how it, the character got written into the Spider-Man comic book. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And I followed that story. The, the first part, the first time you met the young lady, that was at a pro-am on Long Island also? No, that was at a pro-am in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Okay. And then you met her father when you went to Long yep. Island. I had, had a bigger interaction. Excellent. With and and the message there, especially. That's great. And the message there for our students who are going to go on to great things is, like Kelly said, no good deed goes unnoticed. She had a great report, uh, a great talk or a great uh, meeting with the young lady who I'm sure went to her father and said great things about Kelly. And uh, and that led to her uh, making this memory. Uh, tidbit, uh, guys, and I did not have a chance to Google the exact name of the movie. Uh, Kelly Kulik was actually mentioned once uh, on the lifetime in a Lifetime Movie Network movie. Uh, one of the characters in a film uh, was a bowling fan and mentioned Kelly's name. Correct, Kelly? And you and you kind of said that that's kind of a neat memory you have. That is correct. I, I have it on my DVR. I should have looked it up for today. You would think the movie would just pop into my head, but it is uh, kind of like a Cinderella story. But she was a big fan of bowling, and my name got mentioned a few times. And one of the girls was uh, Kelly Kulik for Halloween, so I thought that was pretty cool. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, for those who are from Union, uh, Kelly lives in Union now. Uh, she went to uh, Union High School, uh, class of 95. Uh, mm -hmm. She went to Kiwami, uh, Kiwami Junior High School. She played softball in the in the uh, what they call the Suffragettes League, which is like their young, uh, young girls league. And, and Kelly, I think I gave the class bad info because I presumed this is why you never assume, but I presume Kelly was a pitcher, but she played softball. Well, let me just give you a quick background. As she mentioned basketball, she only bowled her senior year at Union High School because she had played basketball and she played softball, but she was an outfielder. So Kelly, could you talk maybe for a moment, a little bit about your high school sports memories or your recollections? Yeah, it, it was great. I actually, I also played tennis my, my junior and senior year. I played a uh, third singles, which was really cool. I love tennis wow. as well. Played that as a kid. I, I'm just, you know, I basically, I was a tomboy growing up guys and, and ladies. It's true. I just, I really love sports. I love being athletic and, and mobile and, and physical exercise, but um, I, I, Really strong, really built well. I had a very strong arm. So I started out third base in varsity. And then we, as other ladies came on the team, we rotated around and, and I went out to center field, which again was great. I had a really strong arm. I could really get from, from center field to home plate without, without a bounce or anything. And I kind of liked being in the outfield. It's just so much space around you, freedom to run and everything. And I was able to back up the infielder. So, yeah, I played softball all four years, varsity. Um, I was in the four position hitting position. I made all state team my last year, second team all state. We won the counties every year, a legacy there at Union High School under George Hopkins, who also was my bowling coach my senior year. So I just moved right from bowling into softball and, and by far my fondest memories at Union High School were with the softball team. That's awesome. And you had played basketball for a few seasons before that, correct, for the Farmers? 
Yeah, all three years I played varsity, had a great team. We lost a lot of seniors after my freshman team, and we had some uh, rebuilding. And you'd asked me my coach yesterday. I remember her name was Sue Garwacky. So she was my junior high coach, and she became the varsity coach. And unfortunately, because we lost so many great players, we had a lot of rebuilding to do. And my senior year, I just didn't feel like it was within my best interest, knowing I was going to go bowl, possibly on tour, maybe in college. So that's why I went to bowl my senior year in high school. Very good. And I, I, I should mention this to the students because maybe they've been there. But back in those days, Kelly, I think there might have been some high school bowling going on at Highway Bowl right there on 22. Uh, yeah. but, but I think Jersey, Jersey Lanes is where you did a lot of your bowling and, and still do bowling, correct? Jersey Lanes and Linden. Yeah. Growing up as a kid, I bowled at Linden Lanes. And then after college, I bowled mostly at Jersey Lanes. But yeah, Highway Lanes, unfortunately, now has been closed for over – it'll be about a year, I believe, in July. And um, – yeah kind of step in that place. It's like walking back into the seventies, but that's where the high schools in union County used to actually go and practice. And then we'd have competitions over at Clark lanes, which is no longer there as well. I believe it's a Bally's fitness area. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, all, all accurate memories. And, and my mom still lives uh, just a couple minutes away from highway uh, over there by 22 and, uh, and the parkway. Uh, let's segue Kelly for a moment. You mentioned, um, you mentioned tennis, playing third singles, uh, and I mentioned to the class that uh, Billie Jean King, who we really haven't covered in class, and, and that's something that I think uh, down the road um, in future years, uh, hopefully sports and society continues, I certainly think we have to mention Billie Jean King. She was a tremendous pioneer of women's sports, and Kelly knows uh, Billie Jean because Billie Jean King commented uh, tweeted about her uh, after her great triumph over the men. And also, uh, Kelly played on a bowling team that Ke uh, Billie Jean was was affiliated with. So, Kelly, uh, could you just maybe briefly talk a little bit about Billie Jean or what you think of her or just maybe what our students, uh, you know, should kind of know about Billie Jean King? Well, obviously, she's most uh, famously known for beating Bobby Riggs in tennis in the 70s, build, building the equality for women in sports. Uh, she's also the founder of the Women's Sports Foundation. That's really how I first had interaction with her, establishing women from all aspects of all sports all over the world, basically the United States. So softball team, Olympic athletes and um, side athletes and brought bowling on board to have that exposure. So every year there's an annual uh, Galeb at the uh, in New York that she coordinates with. And um when I, I won the bowling thing, she she tweeted about it. She knew what my she knew of my past experience being a tenant of the Women's Sports Foundation dinner. And then we had something called the PBA League, which was first introduced when, while I was on the men's tour. So one of the teams I was on was called the New York Kingpins, and it was the name Billie Jean King actually established for that team. And then she was the manager of the team. So there was about six or, or eight gentlemen on the team, including myself. I was the first woman ever to be on the team. Since then, there have been more women to fill the spots in the PBA League, which is fantastic. But, you know, obviously with Title IX and the exposure for equality in sports, women are trying to gain that that equality through all levels of play. Uh, many sports have it. Some are still distant. But with the equality, it's opened up so many doors for NCAA colleges, for young ladies to go and get an education while competing in their sport or sports. And uh, just really allowing us to do what we love. You know, the, the dream of being a professional athlete. I think when I was in college, the ratio was one out of 170,000 people will become a professional athlete. I don't know if that figure still stands today, but that was when I was in college in 99, 2000. So it's, it's very difficult to make a living doing what you love at the professional status. And uh, I just I hope one day bowling still tends to grow and, and gain that respect and, and notoriety that that it deserves. Uh, that's great. That's great. And that's, you know, Billie Jean King, again, is a is an important figure. Just two more maybe questions, Kelly, before before you uh, before you leave. This was uh, actually there was another another good question from one of our students. Uh, and I'm just oh. Um, of all your awards, and this was uh, asked by Devante, of all your awards, which was or is the most memorable to you or most special to you? Of all your awards, or I'll add the word accomplishments. Oh, all the awards. Um, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, the accomplishment of winning the TSC was something I dreamed of, you know, to win a men's title, to be the first woman to win a men's title. That will always be one of my greatest highlights. And the reason being is because my mom was in the audience and um, she was there to witness it. She was there to encourage me and be a supporter through it and uh, to know how much 
my parents were involved in my youth bowling, the driving, the entry fees, the commitment, the time and so forth. Uh, their sacrifice of time, not realizing how much our parents actually do for us, aunts, uncles, and grandmothers and grandfathers. But that was by far because I got to share and experience that with her, to see the best title ever, and she was there. Other than that, there's been so many Team USA stuff along the way. Um, the, the, the U.S. Open title in 2012 outside in Reno was pretty cool. That's another highlight. But the TSC really, not because the title itself, but because I was able to share it with my mom, who since passed away. She passed away in 16. So to see that, have that memory is is really, is heartwarming. Uh, your, 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 your mom would certainly be overjoyed at hearing those words. And I'm sure she was super proud of you and, and still is. And those are great words to hear just a couple of days after Mother's yeah. Day, Kelly. And, uh, you know, we mentioned to our students last week, last week was Teachers Appreciation Week. And, you know, I, I think I think we all realize some sooner than, than others, you know, how much our teachers do for us, hopefully, and and how much certainly our parents do for us and, and, uh, and other relatives, aunts, uncles, and grandparents. And that was really, really, really well stated. And I think uh, that's great for our students to hear. And I guess, Kelly, we'll wrap it up with this maybe as we approach 1130 is maybe could you talk a little bit about what you're doing nowadays? Uh, I, I know you said you took a little bit of time off and I guess every all sports are kind of off right now. But what is Kelly Kulik uh, doing nowadays? You know, when our students uh, have dinner tonight with their parents and they get to tell them that they heard great answers from this Hall of Fame bowler and they could talk about your accomplishments. And when mom or dad, as they pass the mashed potatoes or the uh, <laughs> stuffing tonight and they say, what is Kelly doing nowadays? What would your answer be? Yeah, well, really, I'm supposed to be on tour right now. We're, I'd actually be heading to Las Vegas today for the USBC Queens. That was supposed to start tomorrow. So we're currently supposed to be on tour right now, but obviously with the current situation, we can't bowl. Um, they're working on maybe having a few events later on in the year. So that's a possibility. I still help my dad out from time to time. Um, I also, I'm a teacher by trade. I, I have a degree in physical and health education, K through 12. So I can always, subs uh, I, I do, you know, coach bowling from time to time. I'm also a, an assistant coach with Junior Team USA program. So helping my dad, um, I've been taking some Zoom extra cl exercise classes four or five days a week. And I've been teaching two Zoom classes. Did a lot of upkeep around the house, some new paint, some cosmetic work done, cleaned the bathroom so now I can eat off my bathroom floors, um, some projects around the house. <laughs> no excuse to say I don't have time to do it because we have time. And then kind of managing some yeah. files along the way. And, and now that the weather's warm, be mobile, out walking, exercising, you know, waving hi to people as they walk by and um, watching what I eat, of course. That's always the hardest part. But now that I'll be traveling, I'm actually traveling today, like you said, to Florida to go visit some friends down there. I'm taking the risk. I'm going to be smart. I'm protected and everything and spend some time down there in the warmer weather, maybe come back with a tan. And then uh, when the bowling centers do open up, I'll be back on the lanes practicing and getting ready for, for whatever comes our way. Oh, that's great. And, and Kelly, and uh, before I say thank you to you, I'd like to thank Miss Rondeau. Uh, Miss Rondeau is uh, is friends with Kelly um, and has some uh, connections with her. And she's the reason that we were able to get Kelly as a guest. And and I want the students to know for somebody as accomplished uh, as 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 Kelly is, who's so busy for her to take the time uh, to give us a half hour today. And not only that, for her to to spend 15 minutes with me yesterday and Miss Rondeau to go over a, uh, a, a test run. Uh, I just can't thank you enough. And, and it's so generous, Kelly, and I hope that our students are appreciative and maybe they can give you a round of applause. And uh, just on behalf of our class, <laughs> Kelly, I hope you can see that. Uh, yep. We certainly appreciate all that uh, it says thanks, Kelly. Uh, and we appreciate your time. And, thanks, um, Todd. Love the, I'll let, love the pictures. I'll let, I'll let you know. I, I'll let you know how the students do on the quiz. Oh, there's some more signs. Oh, yeah, there's some extra yeah. credit points going out. Let me Thank hold you those so up much. a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'll let you know how the students do on the quiz, okay? Sure. Great experience. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you All for right. being so flexible with my schedule. And, uh, guys, I hope to see you. If you're ever in Jersey Lanes and you see me, please come over and say hi, shake my hand. would love to chat with you, all of you. All right. Thanks, Thank Kelly. You. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Students, students, hang around, please. Take care. <laughs> Very good, Miss Rondo. We thank you. If you want to, uh, if you want to sign off, Miss Rondo, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to talk for a few more students, but we appreciate your efforts, Miss Rondo. 
Thank you to those students who made a sign. I know I, uh, I know I turned that. Uh, I know I posted that assignment quite late. I, without getting too graphic, uh, I think as I was getting ready today and showering, I said, "Oh, I wish wouldn't it be great to hold up signs?" And uh, that after I uh, got to school today, I sent you that note. So thank you to those students who made a sign. Uh, let me talk to you now. We'll just be here for another five minutes or so. Let me maybe six minutes. Let me just talk to you about what we're going to do. A couple things. Number one. Um, we're going to post a, I am not going to be in class on Thursday. Uh, my mom on Thursday is going to have a doctor's appointment. That's actually at 1130. She's going from 